Good afternoon, dear learners. Welcome to live class. I am Amrita Samal. Today we are going to discuss chapter 12 and 13, which is introduction to C++ and basic concepts of OOPS. We have discussed about operators. हम बात के relational operators के बारे में, logical operators and uh, um, sorry uh, relational operators logical operators now we will discuss about unary operators so unary operator uh, it is used only on one operand so we have two unary operator minus and plus unary operator so how to use this unary operators J uh, have a look on this for example here i have assigned the value as 40 to the variable a and if i am writing b equal to minus a this is the use of unary operator for using unary operator we have we uh, have to use only one operand now the value of b becomes minus 40 similarly if we want to use as uh, the value of a equal to 20 and we have to assign the value uh, to b using the plus unary operator so we have to write like this and now the value of b becomes 20 then we will discuss uh, the next operator it is the assignment operator the assignment operator stores the value of the expression on the right hand side of the equal sign means assignment operator denotes or represents as the equal to symbol this is the assignment operator using the equal to symbol we are assigning the value to a variable so let's uh, have a look on uh, the assignment operator for example here i have assigned the value to a and b as 5 and 7 so what the assignment operator talks about whatever the value we are writing on the right hand side of this equal to operator the value will be assigned to that variable it may be a b x y z whatever the uh, variable it could be so for example here i have taken a equal to 5 and b equal to 7 so the value of 5 now it is assigned to the the value of 5 is assigned to the variable a then here I have given an example. Uh, I have taken three variables of integer type x, y and z. So the x and y I have assigned the value as 0. So the 0 value will be assigned to, sorry for this. Yeah. Now the value of x and y is uh, the value of x and y becomes 0 and the value of z becomes 10. So the value of this 10 is assigned to z and the value 0 is assigned to y and the value 0 is assigned to x. So this is the example of assignment operator and this is the way how to make use of the assignment operator so moving to the next we will uh, discuss about what are the increment operators and what are the decrement operators so if we want to use the increment operator and decrement operator 
the value of the variable is incremented by 1 or the value of the variable is decremented by 1. So, increment operator is denoted as this plus 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 symbol is used for increment operator and this minus minus symbol is used for this decrement operator. So, we have two ways to use this increment operator and decrement operator. Pre-increment and post-increment. Similarly, we have pre-decrement and post-decrement. So, uh, about this pre-increment and post-increment pre-decrement and post-decrement, we will discuss it later. First, we uh, cover these all operators and what is the basic structure of C++ program. Later on, we will discuss in detail about this pre-increment and post-increment as well as the pre-decrement and post-decrement operators. So, uh, this is the example I have given. Let's see how to use the increment or decrement operators. Here uh, for A I have assigned 5. So, here we have used the assignment operator. Here you can see the use of assignment operator. Okay. Then the next I have written A equal to A plus plus. So, here I have used the increment operator. The value of A, it will increase by 1. So, the initial value of A is 5. Then 5 is incremented by 1. The value of A becomes 6. Then here I have given an example of pre-increment. As you can see here, the increment operator I have used before the variable A. If you can see here the increment operator, it has been used after the variable. So, if the increment operator is used after a particular variable, it is known as post increment. And if the increment operator is used before the variable, it is known as the pre-increment. So, as we are using increment operator, similarly we can make use of decrement operator too. Let us take the same example, a equal to 5. Now, I want to use the decrement operator. For example, b equal to I have written a minus minus. So, this is the use of decrement operator. As the increment operator, it increases the value by 1. Using the decrement operator, the value become, uh, the value of the variable decreased by 1. So, the value of B becomes 4. This is the way to use the increment and decrement operators. So, uh, moving to the next, we will discuss now conditional operator. Conditional operator is denoted as this question mark and colon. Question mark and we have to use the colon. This is the representation of conditional operator. It is also known as ternary operator. So, conditional operator ka use kaise kiya jata hai? Conditional operator use karne ke liye we have to write the condition first here. This is the condition expression. Then we have to make use of this question mark. What is this expression 1 and expression 2? Agar humara ye condition true hua, then expression 1 will execute. If the condition is false, then the expression 2 will execute. So, yaad rakhiye, yahaan pe humko condition mention karna hai. Agar condition humara true hua, then expression 1 execute hoga. 
अगर हमारा कंडीशन फॉल्स हुआ तो एक्सप्रेशन टू विल एक्सिक्यूट सो लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल हियर आई हैव डिक्लेयर ए वेरिएबल ए विच कैरीज अ वैल्यू ऑफ फाइव एंड अनदर वेरिएबल इज बी हैज द वैल्यू ऑफ एट देन आई वॉन्ट टू चेक either a is greater than b or not so the condition we have to write as condition humko pehle condition likhna hai so first we have to write the condition we have written the condition so how to use of this conditional operator first condition likhna hai then humko question mark agar condition true hua the first expression For example, here it is a. Agar condition failed, then put a colon. The second condition, the second expression will be b. So, if a is greater than b, if this satisfies, then a will be the output. If this condition fails, then b is the output. So, according to this given condition. the value of a is 5 5 is greater than 8 is the condition true 5 is greater than 8 no so the second expression will execute means in the variable big it will be stores 8 this is the use how to make use of the conditional operators so let's uh, move to the next size of operator using the size of operator we can know the size of variable or data type and any type of constants so if we are writing size of characters so it returns 1 if we want to know the size of integer data type we have to write size of int it returns 2 if it is float it returns 4 if it is double it will return 8 so according to the data type the size of operator it will return according to that data type or constant or if we have any kind of variable the next is uh, so now we will have a look on what is this oops previously we have discussed the basic feature and the basic uh, characteristics what the c++ language includes as uh, c++ ek high level language hai c++ developed by bryson stratostop and c++ is the extension of c language c language is the procedural language and c++ is the object oriented programming so procedural language mein kya hota tha we are writing procedures and functions this though c++ is the extension of c here we have to use the object oriented programming approach which includes both the datas and function i will show uh, this three terms i have used here object oriented programming see uh, let's uh, move to the first slide then see this is the basic advantages of object oriented programming over procedural programming oops is faster and it is easy to execute then the second one is oops programming structures it provides a clear structure of a program and it is easy to write and use so the next we will see what is this oops concept uh in more than a number of times i have used c++ based on oops concept 
C++ is based on object oriented programming structures. So what is this object? What is this object oriented programming? So first we should understand what is, what are the concepts of OOPS. Then we will see what is object, what is class. So let's move to the next. This is the basic concept of OOPS which includes object, class, inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation and data abstraction. First, हम समझते हैं class क्या है and object क्या है and the remaining feature or the remaining concept we will discuss later on. तो first है class. Class is nothing but a user defined data type. So using the class we have to write a building block. First we have to write the structure of a program using the class. Then how do we access the class? Kaise kare? So using the object we are using the class members. So what is this members? First we should see what is the basic structure of the classes and objects. Before that let's have a look the basic differences between class and object. As I told you class is nothing but it is a um, building block or it is a base structure. So, class is nothing but a user defined data type and to access the members of the class we have to create an object. So, how to create an object, how to declare an object and how to access the datas which are mentioned in classes we will see here. So, this is the basic structure of a class. As you can see here, the basic structure of a class is class, class name. The class is the keyword. The keyword which meaning cannot be changed. And here is the class name. Class name is of any name. Apart A, B, C, X, Y, Z, student, employee, it could be anything. The class name, it depends on the user. Then inside the class, I have mentioned access specifier. The access specifier, it can be private, public and protected. For this session, I am going to talk about only the public access specifier. In the forthcoming session, we will discuss what are the uh, different access specifiers. So, basically inside the class, we have to declare and mention the data members and member functions. Data members kya hai? Data members are nothing but the variables. In C++, variables ko hum data members kehte hain. And the functions what we have to define that is termed as member functions. So the basic structure of C++ is we have to write the class keyword. Then the name of that particular class. We have to put the curly braces. We have to specify the access specifier. And we have to define the data members or member functions. After defining these things, we have to close the class. To close a class, we have to open the curly brass, then close the curly braces, then put a semicolon. The end of a semicolon, it denotes the class structure is ended. Then, the next important thing is how to declare a object and how to access the data members. This is the rule. You have to remember the syntax of the object creation and how to access the data members. So, the structure or the syntax is class name space object name. So, according to this example, this class name 
it should be same as this class name for example the class name i am writing here a b c so now the class name is a b c here i have to write a b c space object name object name it could be anything for example i am writing the object name as o so this is the syntax for declaring an object and to access the data members data members are nothing but the variables what we have declared in class so to access these data members we have to write the object name dot data members so what is the object name i have created the object name as o to access the variable from the class o dot that particular data member data member this is the syntax you have to remember so uh, let's take an example uh, for this let's i have put an example how to declare a class and moving to the next uh, slide let's see this is the basic structure of your c++ program so we have to include the header files we have to declare the variables then we have to define a class and then we have to write the main function so see here a small example i have given the class class here is nothing but it is the keyword keyword okay then the structure is class class name this is the name of my class my class then we have to start the curly braces as you can see here afterwards we have to specify the access specifier public and here in this example i have declared two data members my num and my string these are the data members which is nothing but the variables then we have to define the main function जैसे कि हमको पता है ऑल द प्रोग्राम एग्जीक्यूशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द मेन फंक्शन सो हियर यू हैव टू राइट द मेन फंक्शन स्टार्ट द करली ब्रासेस देन द रूल टू क्रिएट ऑब्जेक्ट द क्लास नेम एंड ऑब्जेक्ट नेम एज यू कैन सी द क्लास नेम माई क्लास एंड द क्लास ऑफ दिस इज सेम my class and my class okay do remember that the class name what you are mentioning while defining the class and while declaring the class it should be same so these are the basic features or basic structure of your c++ program the next class we will discuss how to write a c++ program variable declaration and many more things as we go further so if you have any kind of queries you can reach dear students if anybody you have any sort of doubts you can ask me now hope you have enjoyed this session practice this in the next session we will learn how to write more c++ programs using different control structures and different variables using uh, the different operators and many more things thank you